If you want to make a bunch of Chrysler guys snicker and point, roll past them having a pair of slapper bars on your A, B, or E by the Mopar. It's like, like the major full pull right? You're not supposed to have slapper bars on a Mopar. And here's why. They don't need them. They actually don't work well enough. I don't have a slapper bar here to illustrate something. I actually I, I drew, I drew a slapper bar. See? Okay, so you know, obviously we're on the same page. We know what we're talking about. Um, so there's a reason for this. And it has to do with the way Chrysler positioned the rear axle on the leaf spring. Chevy's General Motors products and Ford's that use leaf springs have the locating pin for the rear end close to the center of the spring. So what happens is you've got about equal amount of spring front and back on those cars. When the car launches and the axle twists, this part of the spring, because it's so long in comparison to the Chrysler, will do this. It will try to wrap. And what the slapper bar does is, slapper bar, right? It comes up and whoop, hits a forward part of the frame, usually right under the spring eye. It stops that from happening. Chryslers have their locating pins approximately a third of the way to the front instead of half. And so this section is much shorter. And on high performance cars, what they did was they actually added an extra, extra half leaves on this side for that exact purpose. So that's, you know, for, for drag racing, it's perfect. I don't think Chrysler engineers had drag racing in mind. Uh, I don't know why they did it, but it happened to work out perfectly for drag racing. Um, that's also the reason why Chrysler has always had that reputation for running on buckboards, because of this short section of the front spring. So, uh, you know, so there's Mopar traction trivia you never knew. Next time around, we'll get into the mysterious triple life of the pinion snubber. <laughs>